folks, Jonathan here. I'm up in the uh, North Carolina mountains and taking a daycation. Uh, not a vacation, but me and my wife uh, come up here to look at a car which was being used for yard art. And most of you probably know that I bought yard art before and sort of brought them back. So anyway, we're gonna see if we can hopefully buy this thing and maybe uh, spend a little bit of time up here before we start heading back home. So, all right, show you more. All right, folks, uh, we've got it. And it's behind us on the trailer, followed really close. So we're still in the mountains and uh, we're heading back. We're getting ready to, we gotta go up Black Mountain. It's not real steep on this side, but it's pretty steep going down on, down the other side of it, so we'll see how this works out. And uh, which this thing, that Model T is not heavy at all anyway. But uh, there's a covered bridge up here and we'll try to find it. If we can find it and stop, and I'll show you. All right. Okay, folks, some of you may or may not be interested in bridges, but uh, I guess you could stop this if you want and read it. This is a uh, patent from 1939. Covered bridge. Here's when they restored it. Just talks about the different styles. And this is the only remaining example of this, I guess, this style. And I've seen the the only remaining camelback covered bridge. But uh here it is. All wooden pegs holding it together. I told my wife the reason they made covered bridges is Model T's were scared to drive across. Because they, if they seen the water, they might fall over. Quit running. Of course, people paint these things. Every one of them ever been to. Right here. Here's the pegs. The old wooden pegs that were put in. Great construction. Built really nice and strong. Somebody's come in here with an axe and chopped on it. So. Anyway. Part of my vacation. Walk down to the covered bridge, and I use my phone, so hopefully I got that video that I can show you. But anyway, we are loaded up, and I think we're going to head back home unless we see something else interesting to uh, to do. Stop somewhere and do something. Really nice here. You know, and it's uh, 80 something degrees, but if you go down into that water, that water's actually cold. I need to get barefoot and just walk in there. All right. All right, folks, we're back with our prize here uh, after our, our vacation there. Didn't know how to do a whole lot. Uh, hard to believe how wore out you can get by just not doing anything. But, uh, we made it back and got her unloaded and just what I need. Uh, don't know a lot about it. I do know that this was a four-door sedan. Could be called a Phaeton. Could be an open, uh, just a four-door touring sedan. And this was probably the original panel. Then it would have had two more doors. And then it would have had another panel that wrapped around the back, but this panel can be molded in. This could be easily made into a roadster body. So, why I bought it? Here's the plans. I need the engine parts for our 1924 Model T Roadster. 
everything's missing internal. Uh, this one here, let me take these bungees off. All right, so let me see. When it turns, it feels like it's got a little compression. I don't know how much, but uh, it's not stuck. And I was just gambling on this, figuring that it was probably, it would probably be all right. Uh, most of these things, I mean, they're they're tough as nails, and uh, we'll, you know, start it up. And if not, we'll use the, the parts out of it that we need. And let me see, it's never had a starter, so it's got an actual block off plate here. I don't know if there's any gears in there on the flywheel or not, so we'll have to check that out. And uh, so we may just have to hand crank it. Now, I think this is a Model A hood. Somebody has put on it. And that was put on just to keep it from, uh, you know, getting wet in there, which it's already been, I'm sure, wet, you know. You can see by these spark plugs and by the, the water neck and stuff, it's, this thing hasn't been ran or started in, hold on, I know it's long, long, 50 years or more. So, anyway, like I said, it's not stuck, so we can work with it from there. Uh, somebody's cut the steering uh, down there in here and I don't know why but uh, and I'm not sure that this body went with this frame uh, you know this guy got this stuff and then bolted everything together just temporary and as a yard art in front of a antique store you know, he bolted some rims on in between he just sort of smashed them in between the uh, the wooden spoke hubs and 14 inch tires just made it, like I said, where he could roll it out and have it as art. It drew in a lot of people, but he bought a Model T uh, Depot hack and, you know, right much nicer car. And I think he's just going to use it now. And uh, plans for this. The bed is not a Model T. The bed is a Model A. And it's in pretty good shape. Just needs some repairs. Uh, but it's not... It's not bad, and we're gonna go ahead and use that on our roaster uh, pickup build, or 29, just because we got it. And I bought this for three reasons. The bed, the engine for the parts, or the complete engine, however it works out. And then this, as another body, I figured it won't be anytime soon, but I, I'm saving parts. We've got another Model A frame, uh, got this body, We've got our GMC V6 with our 5-speed behind it, you know, the big 305 V6. So, uh, and, you know, I may, I can probably or possibly deal uh, Carl out of the turtle deck if he don't use it, unless I extend this, and then I probably wouldn't use the turtle deck, I'd use something different, but anyway, the point is, is we can build another car out of it, and, uh, you know, uh, I've never actually had a Model T Roadster that was together, you know, as a T-bucket. Uh, I, of course, got that original car, but I, I've never had one that was a hot rod, so. Um, and like I said, we've got the V6 waiting and need to do something with it anyway. And, uh, but there was quite a few parts I needed off of this. And, and you know, the fact that he had uh, used it as yard art or, or business art or whatever you want to call, call it, he uh, preserved it, which was a good thing. Anyway, we got what we wanted and uh, had a little family time and and sure needed that anyway the uh as you can see the coal boxes or the coals was in the uh inside i've got a set of coal boxes that we can put on the outside and we'll check the timer out and you know like i said we're just gonna work we can just start with a 12 volt battery using the buzz coals and we definitely got some good parts we'll get the bed off of it i actually saved the willie's bed and probably just sit it back on here temporarily and uh may pull the head on this just make sure none of the valves are stuck and stuff you know reusable head gaskets anyway so we can get them spark plugs out because i can see they're already they are rusted in and then uh we can make sure all the valves are opening and uh make sure everything looks good in there and maybe get her fired up but i look forward to uh look forward to being able to drive that little 
Model T Roadster, and you know, like I said, I, I prefer to leave it original. I really didn't want to uh, hot rod it because it's a little too nice of a car. So anyway, that's what we got, and I appreciate everybody going along with us. And until uh, next time, bye.